Hey everybody, my name is Felix. I am an AMF and Brunswick mechanic. I've uh, been doing this about 20 years. 18 years, yeah. Anyway, um, I grew up with A2s. Uh, I'm in a center with 56 machines, 28 upstairs or 8270s. The 28 I have downstairs are edge string, edge string machine, machines. Uh, it's still hard to talk with the new hardware, so bear with me on this. Uh, this is gonna be pretty quick. Uh, just some quick questions after, you know, sitting in the chat with, with Luke Stream about the sanctioned string machines. Full disclosure, this machine is not set up for sanctioned play. This is one of my control machines. By control machines, I mean after installation, I have done literally nothing to it. That way if I have a problem, I can trace, I can use this as a reference point. That and I can see how long some of these parts actually last. I keep everything on record in my shop, but you know, it, it's an incredibly high volume center. Um, believe it or not, these pins were never replaced. They've only been rotated and cleaned. Uh, I have posted pictures and clips of blown out pins because I do help at other centers where no one does any kind of preventative maintenance at all. Anyway, that's a little off topic. Um, we're gonna start with basic operation and the spotting because that was one of the things people were confused about. Uh, these machines will tell you with the indicator lights, if something is wrong, if a string is too tight, too loose, it tells you that because if they're too tight or too loose, this machine will damage itself. A lot of it's plastic, like this. Um, when you respot the machine, this is how it spots. Everything gets lined up in the frame. 99% perfect. Um, well, not really perfect. I refuse to say anything's perfect. But it's pretty damn close. Um, personally, I hated these things when we installed them. Uh, not just because I'm a bowler and was being stubborn in my ways, but because they were a hot mess on installation. Uh, they're new. We're still learning. Well, they're new to us. Uh, and there is a learning curve, but a lot of it is incredibly simple. And a lot of the learning curve is electronic stuff. But yeah, that's that. Uh, I have never seen a ball get damaged by these machines, by the way. Uh, if I could, I would take the lifts that are in these, you fall around them because it's basically a, a chain with scoops on it. Uh, infrared switch will set it off whenever a ball enters the door. There's no paddle. That would be different on a free fall. Uh, free hanging curtain, cushion assembly. Um, ball goes in, sets it off, ball goes up and down the track like normal. How it works, the ball is just literally getting picked up. It comes down, it scoops the ball up straight up. N not touching anything, not getting scraped up by belts or any debris that's in there. Um, because the reality is, as much maintenance work as we do, there's always going to be something that can possibly damage a bowling ball, and they're not cheap. Especially now, you have these crazy aggressive cover stocks. They don't agree with a lot of old belts, apparently, because they get some crazy burn marks. But yeah, these machines are incredibly simple. Position for everyone. You know, uh, this isn't about should we have them, should we not. This is about answering some questions. Uh, then same thing, you got sensors, reflector. Machine should reset in a second because it wants to be a pain. There we go. Yeah, um, if there were any pins knocked down, I could actually show you that in a second. But if there were any pins knocked down, the machine can tell, oh, this pin was not standing and it'll stay up in there instead of coming back down on the respot. Um, uh, that, that's basic quick run rundown. Uh, changing pins takes seconds. Literally get a hook. You get a hook, you would pull the pin up here, uh, slice the end of the string off, run, run the string through a new pin. Um, they're really, really basic. 
uh, for what they're supposed to do. They're fantastic, you know, parties, all that, uh, open play. Like, it's definitely a viable option for a lot of sex. The people that want to preach about it's not real bowling, blah, 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 stop, please. I get it. It's not. It's as close as we're going to get when they're set up properly. It's also the best way for private centers to survive, I think. It, you know, it's hard enough for me to find parts with what I have access to. Imagine mom and pop up the road trying to find parts for their 8270s and afford it when they're not making $90,000 on a Saturday. Think about that before you judge them and they transition. Because I know my favorite center that I know will be transitioning to, my secret hideaway practice spot, I'm still going to go practice there. I'm not practicing for score anyway. So I'll go hang out with them and have a good time. Because that's what the sport's about, is having a good time. As far as like upper echelon competitive play, that's a talk for a different time. But I figured some of you could finally get to know me and what I deal with, you know, have a glimpse at that. But they're not as bad as people are making them out to be. Am I the biggest fan? No, definitely not. But I understand what's going on. And I love this sport, and I'm going to continue to support it. So I hope you guys decide to do the same before you quit over a string when we've had bigger changes in my lifetime. Anyway, uh... Hope that helped any, and I have to go talk to my surgeon, and I'll catch y'all later.